Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about soft versus hard springs uh, and which one is better. So you may think that because sports cars and race cars use really stiff springs uh, that that's what's best. But in reality if you want the most maximum grip you want a softer spring. So why is there this differentiation? Let's talk about that. Um, and so what we've got here is a depression in the road. So we've got two cars driving. They're about to collide, which is unfortunate, but that's irrelevant. So we have these two wheels uh, and they're traveling. This one's traveling this direction. This one's traveling this direction. And we have this 20 millimeter depression in the road. Now, the only difference between these two vehicles is the spring rate. And so what we have on the left side is a spring and we placed a thousand kilograms on it or about 10,000 newtons of force down on this spring and that compressed it 100 millimeters. So that gives us a spring rate of 100 newtons per millimeter. 10,000 divided by 100. 100 newtons per millimeter. This one on the right, uh, spring B, basically what we have is we've placed that same load, 10,000 newtons, on this spring, but it's only compressed 10 millimeters, so 1,000 newtons per millimeter. So what's going to happen is these are going to travel over this uh, depression, and we want to maintain contact with the ground. The whole point of a suspension is to keep the tires on the ground. So hopefully that much is understood. Uh, seems pretty obvious. Cars can only do the things that they do if the tires are actually touching the ground. So what we've got here is this car is about to leave over this ledge here and then it's got a 20 millimeter gap to fill and it's got 100 millimeters of spring compression to do it. So if you look at this little graph right here, we've got our amount of spring compression which is 100 millimeters and then the force which is on that spring. So 10,000 uh, newtons at this point in time. So as it goes over this gap, you're going to have 10,000 newtons pressing down uh, on this wheel, which we'll just say the wheel is uh, 100 kilograms. And so it'll press down on that wheel and try and get it to contact this ground. And it's got 100 millimeters of compression to push that wheel down uh, because it's been compressed that much from the weight of the car. So as it travels over it, you've got 20 millimeters, so it's going to go from 100 down to 80. And so when it's at 80, now because we've got 80 millimeters of compression in the spring, we've got an 8,000 uh, kilonewton force. So if we take the average of those, 10,000 newtons at the start, 8,000 newtons pressing down at the end, right when it hits contact, we've got an average of about 9 kilonewtons, uh, 9,000 newtons. So we know that force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. 9,000 divided by 100 kilograms, uh, that's the, the mass of the wheel, will have about 9 g's pushing down on that wheel. So if you add gravity to that, once this tire goes over this gap, it's got 10 g's of acceleration acting on it, pressing it down towards the ground. So it's going to hit that ground very quickly. Now this spring on the right, what we've got is 10 millimeters of compression. And so you can see here it's got 10 millimeters of compression uh, and it's got a 10,000 uh, kilonewton force at that. And so we want to fill this 20 millimeter gap. Well, it only has 10 millimeters of compression. So after that initial 10 millimeters of pushing that wheel down, it can't push it down anymore and it just falls at the rate of gravity. So for those last 10 millimeters, you've only got one G acting on that tire to bring it down. And hopefully it does maintain contact at some point or you just skip over this bump entirely. But the point is you won't have contact so the wheel and tire can't be doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is uh, maintaining contact, allowing the car to accelerate, turn, whatever it's doing. Uh, and so because this softer spring presses it down faster, you're going to have more contact and you're going to have better contact. So therefore you're going to have, you know, the car reacting the way that you want it to. Same scenario uh, if we move over here to a bump. So if we have a tire A and that's about to hit a 10 millimeter bump, well to compress the spring 10 millimeters, 10 times 100 newtons per millimeter, it requires 1000 newton force uh, to travel through that spring. So this will be a minor bump and the wheel will maintain contact, the tire maintains contact with the ground. Now for B, to compress that spring 10 millimeters, uh, it requires a 10,000 newton force because of the higher spring rate. So the larger force could lift the car physically into the air or it could just unsettle it. Uh, you could have some load transfer occur and so it might slide out. And so obviously that's not ideal. So that kind of explains why a softer spring makes more sense because it keeps the tire in contact with the ground. So why do race cars have such stiff suspensions? Well, there's actually a lot of really good reasons. Uh, they don't exactly apply to road cars though. So you want to reduce body roll and body lean. That maintains a certain suspension geometry. That's obvious and you can do that uh, by stiffening the suspension. 
You also want to maintain uh, low ground clearance. So low ground clearance because you want a low center of gravity. And so by doing that, uh, you have low suspension travel because if you only have um, if you have a large amount of suspension travel and you have a little bit of ground clearance then you're just going to be bottoming out uh, and obviously you want your tires to be contacting the ground, not your vehicle. The aerodynamic efficiency uh, is at a specific ride height. So cars are set up for a very specific ride height. You want to maintain that ride height. And so you're going to have you know, forces acting on this car that are going to be changing that. So with a stiff spring, you can maintain somewhat of an ideal ride height. Same goes for downforce. So you're going to have downforce pressing down on that car. You don't want it to actually press down too much. You want it to stay at a relatively similar ride height. And so by using stiffer springs, it won't press down as much. And then also driving on tracks, tracks are often smooth. Not all of them, granted, uh, but tracks are often smooth. And so this allows for compliance with very stiff suspensions. Whereas if the track was really rough, uh, you'd see very different changes in the suspension set up uh, by the engineering teams. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.